Yo, these Smurfs make me more ner Look, eight to fucking 18, man. And that was just directly due to fucking Smurfs, man. Just rolling across the map with not a fucking care in the world. Fucking trousers around their fucking ankles and shoot me tattooed across their fucking foreheads, man. <laughs> Tell him, fucking tell him, Riddim. Tell him. Fuck say, look, thirty-eight Tweedle fucking whatever Tweedle fuck with thirty-eight. <laughs> Tweedle fucking uh, whatever Tweedle fuck. <laughs> <laughs>Greetings one and all, this is Rhythm Works and welcome to my channel with some more, yeah you guessed it, Battlefield Hardline action. This time I'm playing on my own with a bunch of randoms, but have no fear, I have recorded some Battlefield Hardline with On Your Six Squad videos. They are archived and ready to be edited and uploaded in the not too distant future, momentarily, in a matter of hours so to speak. But in the meantime, I just wanted to just um, put out um a video of me playing with some randoms look 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 at the madness look at the madness <laughs> look at the madness this is just one of my pet aids i'm sorry sorry to digress but why do people freaking run over their own freaking squad mates man run over their teammates why why and why do people spend their freaking ammunition in the car before we even get to the freaking capture point i don't understand that either and then they complaining when they come out of the car and they get their fucking ass torn up Anyway, sorry, I'm just digressing. But um, yeah, first and foremost, um, I want to take the opportunity to big up and large up one of my brethren then, one of my squad members, Boa77, who has now purchased a Ava Media Live Gamer Portable Game Capture Kit. And um, I don't really have great knowledge to that particular model. Um, one of my mates, Pemby66, does because he actually did buy one. Um, I've been an Elgato user from, from day one, really, and it's never let me down. I'm still using I'm still using the old one. They do have the Elgato HD60, which enables you to record in um, 60 frames a second, um, you know, which is all well and good. Um, also, you can, you can rewind um, to the point where you want to capture your gameplay footage. You can separate your... Um, your commentary from the gaming um, video, the gaming audio, if you like, and edit it in a third-party editing software. So it's very versatile in that respect, and I wanted to have that versatility in a game capturing software. Um, as to the Ava Media, I don't know how that works. I had one, the previous one, the Game Capture HD, which I used for my PS3, um, but that was deemed complicated in terms of you know, getting commentary onto the footage. Um, but I still have it, you know, it's still good. It still records very well, but I just use it for the PS3, if anything. Um, but having said that, I'm digressing, I know. But nonetheless, I wish Boa all the best um, with the launch of his new YouTube channel. And no doubt myself and all his other squad mates, his PSN friends will subscribe to his channel once it becomes up and running. And another good thing about his channel, which I'm looking forward to, is that he he is a trophy hunter. He's a trophy hunting bitch. <laughs> he hasn't earned the title to be a trophy hunting hoe yet, but he's a trophy hunting bitch. But it'll be interesting to see how his gameplay videos fare in that regard. So all the best and just let us know as soon as possible so we can subscribe to your shit anyway next up have you seen the cod blops 3 trailer for the uninitiated the call of duty black ops 3 trailer what do i think of it yeah that's what i think of it simply because it's more of the same in terms of advanced warfare um Futuristic shooters, I'm not really a big fan of, you know, but with the advent of Destiny coming to our attention, 
I think that game has made a lot of people warm to futuristic shooters um, on the basis of it being socially friendly. You know what I mean? You know, it, it was it, the game had a lot of purpose in terms of it being more a social experience. Um, so the whole genre of it being futuristic didn't really matter. Admittedly, at first when I started playing it, I was just getting raged, outraged by suggesting, now they need to take out the whole jumping shit, they need to stop jumping and this and that. I really hated that aspect of it, the whole double jump frog mode engage bullshit, you know? But as I got into the game, I found how necessary it, it, it was to feature that into the game. So my appreciation of my rhythm, your mouth, my appreciation of the game had increased because the social aspect of the game put a balance on it. Does that make sense? So with that, I liked playing Destiny and I liked playing that genre of game. But with Call of Duty, I mean, let's get this into perspective. My first experience, my honest first experience with Call of Duty was with Modern Warfare 2. And you have to understand that I was not a fan of first person shooters to begin with. So for me, I wasn't on par with anybody else to make any discerning distinction between any iteration of the Call of Duty franchise. I had no authority to do so. So, you know, me not liking it, you know, was just something that could be tossed by the wayside for a lot of people. But now that I have embraced the first person shooter genre, I can safely say that playing Battlefield 4 was an experience. Playing Destiny was an experience. Playing Battlefield Hardline was another experience. And after playing Battlefield Hardline, I can safely say that I'm I am definitely definitely into the quick twitch, fast-paced, frenetic um, shooters. I'm in it now, you know, I'm definitely in it. And I can totally understand the fascination with it, like I've said many, many, many a time. Um, but with Call of Duty, Black Ops 3, it looks too freaking busy. Just looks too busy for me. Um, I've noticed quite a few Call of Duty players are displeased with it because all they want is a decent looking contemporary shooter. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be set in the future as it were. And I totally agree, I totally agree, you know? Um, because some of the, the best Call of Duty titles or even the Battlefield titles um, have been set in contemporary times. You know, the mechanics has been good, the gameplay has been good, um, interfaces, etc., etc., has been all good. Um, you know, to be just setting games in the future just to bring some kind of difference to it, I do understand to some degree, but Call of, sorry, not Call of Duty, Battlefield, in my opinion, has successfully um, illustrated the difference um, that was needed to their franchise, but still kept it essentially Battlefield, which, you know, I don't really have no authority because I haven't played a lot of Battlefield, but as a, as a recently converted first, pers first person shooter fan and getting to know the Battlefield franchise in the capacity that I have, I do think that there are many more people like me who are embracing the franchise in the way that they have with these two games, Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline, you know, but with Call of Duty, I, I really don't know, you know, I, I really wish that I could like both the games, both the franchises, but, you know, in terms of cash, there's a lot, there's a lot of money to spend 
on a game. But the makers of Call of Duty are so confident that they are going to be releasing a pre-order beta, which neatly brings me to the subject of pre-orders and the future of pre-orders, the state of pre-orders. Now tell me, who has pre-ordered a game for the sole purpose of testing out a beta, realizing that the beta is not to their liking or to their taste, and subsequently canceled the pre-order? Millions of us have done that practice. And I think that practice is about to change because I think that retailers like Amazon, Game, GameStop have realized that a lot of people end up canceling their pre-orders just because they basically wanted a free beta to play because the availability of demos are few and far between. And with share play coming into play as well, it's kind of difficult ground, you know, to keep to keep on top of. Do you know what I mean? You know, and I think with with share play, it's proven to be like gaming quicksand for game developers and retailers. So I think what's going to happen is that um, game developers and retailers are going to make you financially responsible for taking out a pre-order. By that I mean. They're going to make you pay a minimal amount by way of deposit so you are feeling compelled to complete in the pre-order and that way it will secure your purchase from their standpoint if that makes any sense because it doesn't do any good for them if they're offering something and you know a majority of people don't like the game and they just cancel their pre-orders you know because like everybody else they're in the business of making money amazon included gamestop included so i think that's gonna that's gonna start happening whether it's a worrying trend some part of me says no because i do think right now it's needed where people are going to be making discerning decisions as to what they're going to put their hard-earned cash towards now check this if you buy three triple a titles if you buy tr three triple a titles forget about the pre-ordering if you buy three triple a titles right and you purchase the season passes and all of the dlc for every single game you can end up the money that you've paid for all of that you can end up buying another ps4 with that so you do the math so in respect of pre-ordering right about now if retailers are seeing that there's a trend where people are not committing as much as the retailers or the developers would like they're gonna give you an offer that you can't refuse once you press that enter button do you know what i'm saying you know and with that I think it will make the whole pre-ordering thing balanced in terms of what is the sensible thing to do, what is the not sensible thing to do. And I think us in the UK have set a precedent in terms of pre-ordering because now the level of pre-ordering in the UK where gaming is concerned has gone down considerably. And it's just down to many different factors. It's down to the price of the game. It's down to the game not working properly. You know, it's down to many different things. Down to DLC, you know, physical, V, digital, what have you. There's many different aspects as to why people are not pre-ordering as much as they used to. And I think that can only be a good thing because we have to make sensible decisions now because money is tight. But anyway, that is it. That is all for me for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for stopping by. And as always, you know the coup, whatever the platform, media, genre, happy gaming, because that it is what it is all about. What that it is, that's what it's all about. Oi! <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls. And until I catch you on the next one, stay blessed. Magan. Watch the ride.